From the St. Louis Public Radio newsroom, this is The Gateway. It's Wednesday, June 12th. I'm Abby Larico. A good haircut is hard to find, and some hairstylists and barbers know it's even harder for transgender clients. Their outsides match their insides. Um, whenever, they, whenever they can carry their spirit around with them externally and just be more inherently understood because of that. St. Louis Public Radio's Lauren Brennicky reports on St. Louis barbers and stylists that see a haircut as the first or final step in a gender transformation. That's coming up on The Gateway. A Missouri man was executed by lethal injection last night at the state prison in Bon Terre. David Hozier was sentenced to death for the 2009 killing of former girlfriend Angela Gilpin and her husband Rodney in their Jefferson City home. Advocates say Hozier had ineffective legal representation throughout the appeals process. But Governor Mike Parson declined Hozier's clemency request this week, clearing the way for Missouri's second inmate execution this year. Eight Republicans are running to become Missouri's next Secretary of State. As St. Louis Public Radio's Sarah Kellogg reports, some of the candidates initially had their eye on other offices. Prior to her bid for Secretary of State, Senator Mary Elizabeth Coleman was campaigning for Missouri's 3rd Congressional District. However, with the race for Secretary of State changing, with Senator Caleb Rowden dropping out, she said there was a need for a candidate that, quote, had competence, had a conservative background, and a record for getting things done. Coleman said a focus for her campaign is making sure illegal immigrants do not vote in Missouri elections. We'd have some audit processes in place. We'd be able to go in and make sure that people who have registered are U.S. citizens. As I said, our voter rolls right now, there isn't a way to check that. Coleman also supports a proposed constitutional amendment saying only U.S. citizens can vote in state elections, which is already illegal. In Jefferson City, I'm Sarah Kellogg, St. Louis Public Radio. Congresswoman Ann Wagner is among a bipartisan group of U.S. House members pushing to plan what Gaza will look like at the conclusion of the Israel-Hamas war. The Missouri Independent reports she joins fellow Republican Kathy McMorris of Washington and Democratic representatives David Trone of Maryland and Brad Schneider of the Chicago area to form the Gaza Working Group. Their stated goal is to involve Congress in discussions about the future of Israeli-Palestinian relations. Wagner said in a statement that it will be important to stabilize the region to counter Iran's influence and for the U.S. to have a seat at the table in rebuilding the area. The number of Missouri residents traveling to Illinois to receive abortion care has tripled in the past two years. St. Louis Public Radio's Madison Holcomb has more on Planned Parenthood of Illinois' recent findings. Missouri has a near-total abortion ban, where the only exception is in cases of medical emergency for the pregnant person. Rianne Hawkins with Planned Parenthood of Illinois says they anticipated the Supreme Court would overturn Roe v. Wade and that this would cause many states around Illinois to enact strict abortion bans. So many people are coming into the state to to seek that abortion care. It's important that Illinois remains that haven in the Midwest. The organization released statistics earlier this week on the surge of patients, looking ahead to the two-year mark of the Dobbs decision. The nonprofit says there has been a 200 percent increase in abortion patients coming from Missouri. I'm Madison Holcomb, St. Louis Public Radio. Negro League baseball players, like the legendary Cool Papa Bell, are finally getting some long overdue recognition. Their statistics are now part of the official Major League Baseball record book. That means St. Louis baseball fans will see hometown Negro League teams like the St. Louis Giants and the St. Louis Stars in the database. Ed Wheatley is a baseball historian and author. The thing that is going to be exciting is to go looking in who's the leaders uh, across Major League Baseball, who's the leaders in American and National Leagues, now that these stats have been rebalanced. Wheatley was a guest on St. Louis on the Air. A roller coaster, carnival games, and a pirate ship will soon be among the attractions available to downtown St. Louis visitors. Developers of St. Louis Union Station announced a new phase of attractions coming to the property, which already includes the aquarium, wheel park, mirror maze, a mini golf course, and several restaurants. Lodging hospitality management is behind the project. A spokesperson said in a statement that the expansion is an affirmation of the developer's commitment to downtown. Construction is set to begin in January, with the new attraction set to be open by next Memorial Day weekend. The right haircut? Well, it can be hard for anyone to find. Some St. Louis hairdressers understand that a good haircut is especially important for their transgender clients. 
As St. Louis Public Radio's Lauren Brennicke reports, these stylists and barbers are moving toward gender-free terminology and using in-depth consultations. Stick Snapper finally recognized themselves in the mirror when they were 15. It took some new clothes and a new hairstyle. They're 19 now and cut their hair at home a few weeks ago. Snapper says it's a cheap, easy way to feel more at home in their body. They live in Washington, Missouri, and felt uncomfortable visiting hair salons nearby. So when I see myself with that longer hair, it doesn't look like the trans version of me that I'm trying to present myself as and kind of be seen more as. It looks more like my you know, pre-identity there and my birth sex. So I was like, okay, I need to do something about this. Napper says it's easier to find more accepting hair salons in bigger cities. Gender-affirming haircuts are just another form of gender-affirming care for trans and gender nonconforming people. For them, it came early in the transition process. Sam Slate, a trans man in St. Louis, says a gender-affirming cut was late in his transition. And I had what I would say like short hair, but it wasn't until I actually transitioned that I went to the barber and said like, I want a fade. I never, I'd never had a fade up until then. I'd wanted one my entire life. So it really, it was a long, in some ways, like the clothes were easier. He shopped around until he felt comfortable enough with the barber. He found one on social media and learned he was gay. And that gave me like the conduit of safe space to be able to, to, to walk in and tell him what I wanted and not expect, like, and, and felt safe enough that I wasn't going to get pushback from him. Then Slate got a fade. It's not an especially tricky cut, but the entire experience was gender affirming. Slate says it felt natural. He ran, brushed his fingers through his new short hair, while surrounded by barbers and clients taking part in the seemingly mundane task of a haircut. So it wasn't just the haircut, like it was the in whole experience. It wasn't a matter of just being able to sit down and say, I want to fade. It was everything about it, from the way that it smelled, to the tools that he used, the other clientele in the shop. He goes to Benny De La Porte at Union Barbershop in Soulard now, every three weeks. The shop is filled with vintage Playboy posters, a bar, and an aftershave aroma. They, they'll see someone who comes in and they know everybody, and I'm gonna tell, say the same exact stuff to them that I'm gonna say to the next person walking in who's never been here before. Everybody gets treated the, the exact same with a smile on our face, you know? De La Porte works on every type of hair just as long as it's shorter hair. His clients book with him online by clicking masculine style haircut. It's nothing out of the ordinary. Slate goes to the barber for a haircut. Other trans people might prefer a gender affirming cut in style. Rango Estrella works at the front desk at Homegrown Hair in Tower Grove South. She says Slate would get a good faded haircut at either business, but he might have a different experience at each. The other day I had a, a client come in. She, you could tell she was extremely nervous. She had never like presented as her like her gender mm-hmm. in public before. And she like blurted out like, oh, this is my first week uh, doing this. And I'm like, that's awesome. Like, can I help you? <laughs> Stylists from both salons use full consultations to understand client needs before starting the haircut. That's different than other often corporate shops, says Caitlin Tishka, owner of Homegrown Hair. So a consultation is more than just figuring out what kind of hair you want to do. It's discovering your client and who they truly are. Any haircut should make a person feel good. The only difference between any haircut and a gender-affirming haircut? Whenever they feel like their outsides match their insides. Um, whenever, they, whenever they can carry their spirit around with them externally and just be more inherently understood because of that. Tishka says making clients feel safe is the most important part of her job. I'm Lauren Brennicke, St. Louis Public Radio. David Cazares and Jonathan All edited that piece. The Gateway is a production of St. Louis Public Radio, a listener-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Abby Larico, and from the St. Louis Public Radio newsroom, this has been The Gateway. The Gateway.